Angie Barlow has been missing for seven months. Then, in a stunning turn of events, her own grandmother becomes a victim of fraud. Coincidence or... I believe that there is a connection. In the months following Angie's disappearance, about $8,000 is mysteriously withdrawn from an account belonging to the missing woman's grandmother, Sharon Barlow. The timing of the crime is of special interest to the Indianapolis Metro PD. There's a possibility that there's a connection because this investigation or this fraud occurred after Angela was, was missing. Cops obtain a search warrant in connection to Angie's disappearance. It leads investigators to a residence in Angie's hometown of Muncie, Indiana. And it's there where they make a disturbing discovery. One individual that was arrested that had uh, account information of Angela's grandmother. Our affiliate, WXIN, speaks with Angie's parents. We don't know how they got the information they got. Police arrest a woman by the name of Michelle Brown on fraud-related charges. But get this, the woman tells investigators she didn't know Angie's grandmother, but knew her bank's routing number and chose her account number by chance. Cops have their suspicions. The information that was used to commit the fraud was specific information that Angela would have. If true, then how did Michelle Brown get this very specific information from the missing 23-year-old? With an ongoing investigation, we're still working on that as well. While serving the search warrant, police arrest three other people at the home on various charges unrelated to Angie's disappearance. Irregardless of Angie, what they've done, or at least one of them, has done to my mom, you know, is just, why? And the even bigger question for Angie's parents, do these four people know anything about their daughter's disappearance? That's definitely something that goes through your mind, especially when all you do day in and day out is just wonder where your daughter is. I believe that there is a connection, but I cannot find one yet. Also, cops have to consider something else, a possible larger conspiracy, one that involves this fraud case and the couple who threw the party where Angie was last seen. To date, cops don't have any direct evidence linking the people or cases together. Then four weeks later, police get an anonymous tip. Saying where Angela could be located. We just had to wait, still holding on to the hope that she was out there alive. That tip points police in the direction of the backyard of a home that had been vacant for a long time in Indianapolis. That home is just a little more than 10 miles from where Angie went missing. Once we obtained the search warrant, we had cadaver dogs respond, and once they hit a location, and then we proceed to um, start digging. Methodically, CSI teams excavate an area in the backyard. Then, there in a shallow grave, they spot the remains of a woman. Angie's mother gets a phone call from an IMPD detective. He said, I think we may have found Angela. And he asked if we could be in the coroner's office at 9 o'clock in the morning to come in and identify her. The body is badly decomposed, so the coroner shows Angie's parents photos of still visible tattoos. Those are images that you see when you go to bed. And it wakes you up in the middle of the night. Because um, that's something no parent should ever have to go through. Tragically, her parents must confirm their worst fears. That was, in fact, my daughter. And we had to sit in the coroner's office and give the Jane Doe a name. And at that point, Jane Doe was Angela. The coroner's office is not releasing the cause of death to the public due to the ongoing police investigation and concerning the residence where the body was found. 
He had moved in very recently. There was no reason for us to think that he was a part of this investigation. And while police continue to track down every lead, Angie's parents say their final goodbyes, sparing no expense for their oldest daughter. We looked at it this way. Price wasn't going to be an issue for it. We don't get the chance to pay for that wedding. We don't get grandkids of hers to spoil. We don't get any more Christmases. We don't get any more birthdays. We don't get anything anymore. And that was the absolute last thing that we could do for her, was to make sure that she had everything that she wanted and to make sure that it was beautiful. Following Angie's funeral, Detective Jose Torres hasn't forgotten about Raven Miller and Baron McCullough, the couple who hired the 23-year-old to dance for them at that private party where she was last seen alive. I believe there, that there are persons of interest not only in the disappearance of Angela, but also the death of Angela. It's a strong accusation coming from the detective working Angie's case but he claims he can back up his statement if someone else comes forward. Someone else who was at that private party that night. I believe that there were other people in this apartment when this incident occurred and know exactly what happened to Angela that evening. And my goal here is not just an arrest. My goal is a conviction. And now, detectives are pleading with anyone who's watching this story now who knows anything about Angie's death to finally come forward. It's been long enough. It's time to clear your conscience. You can submit a tip anonymously at 1-800-222-TIPS or at crimewatchdaily.com.